Hello friends, welcome to Dungeons & Dragonfly, where I adapt various characters for use in D&D. I'm Dragonfly in question, Dragonfly9078, and today we'll be building Megamine from Konosuba. So a bit of background, uh, Megamine is a powerful archwizard from the Crimson Demon Clan, known for their red eyes, their unusual names, and their incredible magical power. Megamine is no exception, being able to cast the most powerful attack spell in the world, Explosion, which is basically a magical nuke. But since this is Konosuba, there has to be a catch, and Megamines is pretty bad. She can only cast Explosion once per day after which she's unable to move due to using up too much magic. She also stubbornly refuses to learn any other magic, proclaiming that she only loves explosion magic and that she doesn't care that she's a less effective adventurer. So what do we want out of this build? I'll give you a hint. It starts with an and ends with an Not only do we want explosions, we want only explosions, as Megamine actively avoids casting other spells. So with that in mind, uh, let's take a look at ability scores. We'll be using the standard point array from the player's handbook, if you're rolling for stats, make sure that Intelligence and Charisma are at least 13 for multiclassing. To start off, we're dumping Strength. Megamine is the weakest of the group physically, and we just don't really need it for anything. Dexterity's next at 10, she's not especially fast, and her spell takes a while to charge up, so being lower in the initiative actually makes some sense flavor-wise. We'll put the 12 in Constitution. Again, she's not especially tough, and her Endurance is nothing to brag about, but it's actually higher than her canon constitution, because the first time we see her in the anime, she collapses after not eating for three days. With a plus one constitution modifier, our Megamine can starve for a whole four days before getting any levels of exhaustion. Our 13 goes into intelligence. Megamine is the smartest of the bunch, with the possible exception of Cosma, and even there I'd argue that she is smarter, but her delusions of grandeur make her seem less so usually. She also has more common sense than, say, Aqua or Darkness, low as the bar may be, so Wisdom gets the 14. And finally, Charisma's gonna be 15. Megamine doesn't have any problems talking to people. They do have trouble understanding her, but that's more due to her, you know, weird delusions and uh, strange mannerisms, not, to, not due to any lack of confidence on her part. For race, we're gonna go with Variant Human. Megamine is a Crimson Demon, but according to the Konosuba movie, Crimson Demons aren't actually demons, just humans that were experimented on. Bump Charisma to 16 and, and Intelligence to 14. Uh, for the free feat, we're going to take Elemental Adept, choosing Fire, so we can treat 1s on the damage rolls for our explosions as 2s, and so we can ignore resistance to fire damage. For our skill, we're going to take Performance for those elaborate introductions and incantations. Uh, for our background, I went with Far Traveler to get prof proficiency in Insight and Perception. Like I said, Megamine is probably the smartest of the pack and has the most common sense, barring her tiny explosion-shaped blind spot. Megamine went to a magic school back in her village, meaning she studies for her magic. So, obviously, we're starting out as a sorcerer, specifically a divine soul sorcerer. Megamine's in a party with a literal goddess, so she is favored by the gods. Uh, once per short rest, she can add 2d4 to an attack roll that she misses or a save that she fails. Probably the second, she doesn't really attack people without her explosion magic. For your skills, uh, take Arcana and Intimidation. Megamine knows a lot about magic, and she's pretty good at convincing people to do what she wants, but mostly through more underhanded methods than I would say fall under the purview of Persuasion. The main reason we dipped into Sorcerer was for the font of magic and metamagic abilities. At level 2, Megamine gets a pool of sorcery points that she can use to, re to recover spell slots, get advantage on a skill check, make a weapon magical for a minute, or gain temporary HP. Now, you can't recover a 9th level spell slot like this, so just ignore it. It doesn't help with explosion. Oh, spoilers, your explosion is a 9th level spell. More importantly, you can burn spell slots to gain a number of sorcery points equal to the level of the expended slot. Megamine doesn't cast spells other than explosion. Ever. This gives you a way to funnel those unused spell slots into, say, temporary HP. Unfortunately, her sorcery point pool maxes out at 3, but maybe your DM will let you go over that since you only have one spell. It's worth asking, at least. She can also use the points for metamagic at level 3. With Heightened Spell, Megamine can spend all three of her points to give one target of her explosion disadvantage on the spell's save. And with Empowered Spell, she can spend one point to reroll a number of the spell's damage dice equal to her Charisma modifier. 
Empowered Spell can actually be used with another metamagic, but again, her cool max is out of 3 points unless your DM agrees to let you go over. Speaking of explosions, let's get explosions. Meteor Swarm is a 9th level evocation that takes 1 action to cast. Huge fireballs plummet to the ground at 4 points that you can see within its 1 mile range. All creatures in a 40 foot sphere around one of those points makes a dexterity save, which takes 20d6 fire and 20d6 bludgeoning damage, uh, which is halved on a successful save. With Elemental Adept, any 1s that you roll on those 40d6s are treated as 2s. And bear in mind, a given creature can only take the damage from one of these spheres, so overlapping them doesn't do anything but reduce the affected area. Now you might be wondering, wait, we're only a 3rd level character and that's a ninth level spell, how are we getting that? Well, we're getting that by taking 17 levels of Wizard, specifically in the School of Evocation. Normally I'd go through level by level, but Wizard levels are pretty boring, and we only really care about a couple of the class features anyway, since we're only casting the one spell. Along the way, we do get four ability score improvements. Uh, cap off your intelligence for the best major forms possible, and bump your constitution up to 14 so we can go a whopping five whole days without eating. And get some extra health. Uh, Megamine is all sorcerer and wizard levels, so all of her hit dice are d6s, so the extra health is definitely appreciated. Second level evocation wizards get to sculpt spells, which lets you choose a number of creatures up to 1 plus the spell's level whenever you cast an evocation spell, which for explosion, or meteor swarm, will be 10. Uh, the creatures you chose automatically succeed on the save against the spell, which in this case means half damage. Just because Darkness wants to get blown up doesn't mean you should blow her up, so use this to spare her some, uh, some of the damage. Empowered Evocation at 10th level lets you add your Intelligence modifier to your Meteor Swarm's damage. Now that's only 5 compared to the 40d6 that you're already doing, but hey, every little bit helps. As for the other Wizard and School of Evocation features, Arcane Recovery lets you regain spell slots on a short rest, which is nice, but it can't recover slots higher than 6th level, meaning it can't help you cast another Meteor Swarm, meaning we just don't care about it. Similarly, Over Channel doesn't work on spells higher than 5th level. Potent Cantrip only enhances your cantrips, and Evocation Savant just really doesn't matter when you have the only spell worth knowing already written in your spellbook. Turning our attention to our spells, uh, we are a level 20 full caster, so we have the maximum number of spell slots and a spell save DC of 19. However, as we discussed, the only spell worth actually casting is Meteor Swarm, so all our slots under 9th level are just going to be burned for sorcery points. Technically, we also get like 9 cantrips, but if we won't demean ourselves to cast Incendiary Cloud or Fireball, we're definitely not settling for Fire Bolt, even if having an attack cantrip would hugely increase our usefulness. If you absolutely have to have lower level spells, I'd suggest maybe Acid Splash to flick some digestive juices from a giant toad onto any poor friendless losers in your general vicinity, and maybe find Familiar to get your very own little Chomosuke. Now that the build's complete, the question becomes, how viable is it? Well, it's not. But were you really expecting it to be? You only have one spell, 10 AC, and just over 100 HP. You can't run, jump, or defend yourself in any meaningful way, but you know what you can do? You can blow up anything that makes fun of your name. Well, you can blow up one thing. Or four things? Wait, how many things can fit into four separate 40 foot radius spheres? Okay, I, I guess you can blow up a lot of things, but you can only do it once a day. Still, it could be a fun build to play for a one shot or as an NPC, and honestly, I'm pretty happy with how it came out. I hope you enjoyed the build. If you have any feedback or suggestions for characters to build in the future, please leave them in the comments below. I do have a backlog of characters to get through, but I don't have a specific order to them, so if I get an interesting suggestion, there's no reason I couldn't do it sooner. Thank you for watching, friends. I will see you all later.